Hi, Mystery Recap here. Today, I'm going to explain an Australian science fiction film called 2067. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The premise of the movie is set in 2067, when the world has been destroyed beyond rehabilitation because of climate change. All plant life has been extinct. With a lack of plant life, the amount of oxygen in the air has decreased exponentially. People have to buy artificial oxygen to survive. 99% of the world has gone dark. People suffocate to death. In such conditions, only one city in Australia has survived, and it is all thanks to a company called the Chronicorp Corporation that manufactures synthetic oxygen. However, artificial oxygen causes a fatal disease called the sickness over time. Humankind has mere years before it goes fully extinct. Ethan White is a resident of the Australian city. He and his friend, Jude, work as mechanics in the Chronicorp Corporation. The corporation is also working day and night to find a cure for the sickness and a way to save the world. Ethan's wife, Xanthi, also has the sickness. Ethan works hard day and night to earn and buy her better oxygen. One day, as Ethan and Jude work in the tunnel, the Chronicorp CTO of Particle Research, Regina Jackson, summons them to her office. There, she introduces herself to the two, and tells them that humanity is going to die in a few years if the conditions do not change. She then reveals that Ethan is the only one who can help everyone and save humanity. Ethan is confused and doesn't believe her. But Regina insists he visit their lab. The lab has huge machinery. The lab doctor named Billy Mitchell introduces himself to Ethan, and looks at Ethan's wrist device for a second. They then explain to him that Ethan's father, Dr. Richard White, started this project 20 years ago. The machine that stands in front of them is a time machine called the Chronicle. In the first ever experiment done with the machine, they had to send radio waves into it to check what was on the other side. They found out through it that 407 years later, in 2474, the Earth would have enough vegetation to maintain enough oxygen in the air and sustain human life. The people come to believe that if humanity still exists several hundred years later, it is likely that they have found solutions to all the problems plaguing their reality. However, a strange activity baffled the scientists there. The waves they sent had come back reformed. When they decoded it, they found out that someone from the future had sent them the message saying, send Ethan White. So now, Regina and the whole team want to send Ethan into the future for him to bring back the cure. Ethan is beyond surprised. He doesn't believe them and thinks that Regina is just bluffing. Moreover, he doesn't want to leave his sick wife and go into the future. So, he declines to help. Later Ethan and Jude are at a diner, where they buy crisp oxygen. Jude tries to persuade Ethan to go through with the plan and help save humanity. However, Ethan laughs at him, saying that he doesn't want to be like his father. Ethan hates his father for never being there for him. 20 years ago, his father left home and went missing, while his mother was killed when he was a kid. Since then, he has been brought up by Jude, who he regards as his older brother as well as best friend. He blames his father for leaving his mother to complete the project, and doesn't want to follow in his path and leave his sick wife. However, Jude manages to persuade him, saying that the only way he can save his wife is by finding a cure. Ethan reminisces of his eighth birthday when his father has bought him a strange box as a gift. As he puts his hands inside the box, a device latches onto his wrist, making him bleed. Richard had placed a permanent hand device on his son. It has been many years but Ethan doesn't know its use yet. Later at home, Ethan tells Xanthi everything that happened during the day, and she too insists him to go. The following morning, Ethan scribes, I will find my way back to you on a metal flower, and leaves it beside Xanthi. He then goes to Regina's office again and tells her that if he can find only one cure, they will have to give it first to Xanthi. Regina accepts, and takes him to the lab again. Dr. Mitchell shows him the suit that he has to wear before getting into the machine. As they begin to explain the mission to him, Ethan realizes that they do not have a plan. They have no clue what he will see, or who he will meet at the other end. However, after they put him in the suit, they give him an AI device called the Archie. Archie will show the lab Ethan's vitals at all times. It will also help to navigate his location. Then, they finally throw him into the machine. Inside, Ethan moves at high speed through time. He falls from the sky and lands in an unknown jungle. The friction from the air causes his suit to catch fire, so he quickly gets out of it. Then, he looks around, and is astounded by the beauty of nature. He finds that the world has completely changed. The trees and the natural oxygen are back. He walks in the direction Archie directs him, and sees a bunker door of some sort. But what catches his eyes is a skeleton that lies right in front of the door. Its skull has a bullet hole in it. 
Furthermore, he looks at the name tag on it and is horrified to see his own name. The skeleton is Ethan's. Ethan also finds the skeleton's Archie, and plays the last recording on it. He hears a man say that this is the only way, and shoots Ethan. Just then, the device's power goes off. He is horrified, believing that this is the fate that awaits him. Then, he notices the skeleton's wrist device. It is identical to Ethan's, except the light glows green in the skeleton's device, but Ethan's has been red his whole life. That night, he lights a fire and eats wild berries. It turns out that the berries were poisonous. Ethan vomits and starts to go unconscious. Ethan wakes up after a while, and is surprised to see Jude in front of him. As it turns out, the lab saw Ethan's vitals dropping and assumed he was having a reaction to poison. So, they quickly sent Jude to the future, with the cure to save him. Sometime later, Ethan and Jude find that his skeleton remains there, which means his fate hasn't changed. They then use Archie to find another door. Some device scans Ethan's eye and grants them access. When they go in, a monitor welcomes him. It asks him for a DNA sample. When he accepts it, his wrist device begins to work, making him bleed. After the blood test, it goes green. The lights to the room turn on and they realize that they are in Chronocorp's lab, 407 years later. The time machine is in front of them too. Jude gets excited because now they have the means to go back to the past, but Ethan doesn't think so, saying they haven't changed anything, and he will end up dead, just like the dead Ethan. Ethan checks the system log and finds a holographic recording made by his father, who explains that the time machine was originally designed to collect the oxygen data in the future planet, and then transmit it back to the past. However, when his father first started the time machine, he received a message asking him to send his son to the future. Despite his misgivings, he chose to do so and made a DNA verification here for Ethan. Soon, Ethan and Jude realize that the time machine won't be able to take them back because its battery has almost depleted after 407 years. What's worse is that the activation of the lab triggers a malfunction in its nuclear power core, threatening to unleash a nuclear explosion in just 4 hours. This means they have to find a way to fix the time machine and travel back before the explosion. Running out of time, they have to act quickly. Outside, they are surprised to find a ruined city covered with green plants, but inhabited with no humans, showing that Earth starts to recover itself after human extinction. Human skeletons are scattered everywhere. Ethan gets to his wife's house, only to find her bones, making him fall into despair. Jude tries to persuade him to go back to the past, as the cure against the sickness doesn't seem to exist even in the future world. However, Jude's words make Ethan suspicious. He then turns on the rusty Archie to play the recording once again, from which he recognizes Jude's voice and it seems Jude is exactly the one who shot him. Jude raises his gun at Ethan, strongly denying that he would shoot Ethan. Ethan finally decides to complete the mission first, so with joint efforts, they manage to repair the power core and then return to the lab. Now the Chronicle system works and they should be able to return to the past, they just need to wait 37 minutes till portal launch. Once the countdown reaches zero, the portal will tether to 2067 for approximately 30 seconds. However, Ethan still finds his body remains behind a door at the same location, which implies that they haven't made any changes to the future. In order to figure out the truth, Ethan pulls out the battery of his current Archie and puts it onto the rusty one. In that way, he gets access to another video, in which Ethan is assured that his future self will be killed by Jude. Jude then confesses that there is no hope of changing the future and he is trying to protect Ethan. Finding it hard to believe, Ethan locks his brother up in a room, then plays back his father's holographic log from the day he died. He soon discovers a conversation between the Chronocorp's CTO, Regina Jackson, and his father. It's shown that Ethan's father wanted to use the time machine to save all mankind by finding the cure, but the CTO only intended to use the machine to flee from the dying time with some chosen few. However, whichever plan they choose, someone must travel into the future and turn on the time machine. To safely send living matter through time, it requires an operational link from both sides. In order to stop the CTO with her plan, his father locks the time machine and sets Ethan's DNA as the verification key. In anger at what Ethan's father just did, the CTO killed him immediately. She then orders Jude to kill Ethan's mother and be a guardian to him, so one day they can use Ethan's wristband to get access to the future. Ethan is beyond surprised. The man he thought of as his brother, turned out to be the one who killed his mother and is about to kill him too. He also realizes that he has misunderstood his father, who didn't deliberately abandon the family. Knowing that Regina wants to bring a chosen few into the future, Ethan tries to shut the time machine down, but Jude rushes to stop Ethan and reveals that he's tasked here by the CTO to ensure that Ethan is sent in time to repair the power failure. 
Once Ethan activates the time machine, he should kill Ethan. However, Jude has formed close emotional relations with Ethan over the years. Seeing his brother-like friend in that state because of him, he is guilt-ridden. So, instead of shooting Ethan, he shoots himself dead. In rage and regret, Ethan is determined to fulfill his father's dying wish, which is to find the cure and save the dying humans. He looks into the monitor, and finds the very first message written by his father. He deduces that the message sent Ethan White was sent by himself. Hence, he codes in the message again and sends it into the past, along with many other things. Meanwhile, in the laboratory of the year 2067, the CTO with a group of privileged chosen people are waiting anxiously for the time machine to be activated. To their shock, however, the time machine sends back hundreds of extinct plants along with a copy of the recorded murder of Ethan's father. Soon after, the time machine is destroyed by Ethan, resulting in the collapse of the CTO's plan. In the end, the CTO is arrested due to the murder. The plants sent back to 2067 are cultivated to revitalize the planet. Ethan's wife also receives a flower sent from him and understands his choice. While Ethan has to stay in the future world alone, he buries Jude and forgives him. A butterfly catches his attention, and leads him again to the same entrance, where Ethan is happy to notice that the corpse of his future self is gone. He rushes to take a look at the world outside, and feels relieved to see a futuristic eco-friendly city, in contrast to the deserted one from earlier. His decision had changed the future of mankind. Subscribe for more videos like this, turn on notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.